We are changing the boat game forever with a revolutionary new design that solves the massive weakness of your typical boat. A complete lack of tank treads and the inability to drive on land and in shallow water. And today, we're gonna put it through a series of tests on land and sea to find out if it does what boats are supposed to do or if it's a complete waste of hundreds of dollars. It's inspired by a combination of the DARPA CAT and a snowmobile of all things. If you've ever seen a snowmobile water skip, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The transmission on the sky is stolen from my half-track dragster, but I'm only using one drivetrain to save weight. I had to adapt the rear end arrangement quite a bit for a boat, so I am pretty worried that the bearing blocks on the rear are gonna fail catastrophically. The skis on the front ended up looking way dumber than I had originally thought, but hopefully everyone is too distracted by the massive chainsaw on the back to notice the clown shoes out front. And it's designed such that it can actually drive on land. Or maybe it'll just dig a hole and destroy itself. I really don't know, let's go find out. It sort of moves, but it's digging a trench in the grass, and then it kind of floats because there's nothing below the tracks. Then the motor slipped, so the gears weren't meshing, which means I need to take this thing completely apart to access the motor screws because I didn't think things through properly. I know, surprise. Seriously, you can't get a tool in there at all to tighten the motor screws. Also, I added a stiffener that I forgot to install previously because apparently a dog as an inspector is just not a great idea. But we still need to know, can this design even work off-road in the dirt? All right, so we're cruising around looking for somewhere to film. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any water in the neighborhood, but right now we're just doing off-road testing. Got the car in the back, co-pilot right there. And we quickly found the perfect dirt drag strip to do the off-road testing. It turns out this thing can launch incredibly hard in the dirt. And boy, does it love to throw rocks. It can even steer on loose soil, which to be honest, I'm surprised it can even steer at all. Now, turning is more of a suggestion than a command, but agility is not what we're after here. The suspension on it is also doing an incredible job, which is a bit surprising too. The hole is made out of thin wall 3D printed sections crammed with foam and glued together with carbon fiber rods. So in theory, if we crack it with a rock or something, it should be pretty hard to sink. We have no clue if this thing even floats, so we're actually gonna test it in a bathtub before we lose it to sea. I'm gonna find out if it floats. Let's go, I don't have much faith. Hang on. It, it works. works. Dude. Now I'm gonna Back in sink. And look, that side's sinking though, because it's of the motor. It's turning water green. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it floats a little, and that is one of the prerequisites of being a boat. Should we test it while it's in there? <laughs> you want to? <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> Dang, that moves water. But any bit of throttle sucks the back end down. These thread extensions have an angle that's designed to give some lift, but I'm not sure I wanna rely on just that. When I tested my amphibious dragster, the wheels would displace so much water that it would just sink the back end. Now, I know I have some smart viewers, so you're probably already saying, but snowmobiles don't float. I wanna remind you this is a boat first and an off-road vehicle second, so we're kinda of doing the inverse. This leads us to these added floats on the side so we can look as dumb as the USS Independence. I hope we don't fail that bad though as we head out for some open water testing. After a quick introductory run, I told Jet he could go full throttle and this thing did a complete backflip. We 
We didn't expect this at all, but we're super impressed. Fortunately, I considered flooding during the design phase and the electronics drain really well. The next few runs were dedicated to finding the right balance between throttle and stability, and we got pretty close. Pretty cool. yeah. You can see in some of these shots that it still digs the back end down, and in the shallow water, it chews right through the mud. This is part of the design we were really looking forward to. There we go. Oh, and how nasty that water is, but we don't have a propeller. We got a tank motor, this should be fine but the tracks are throwing a ton of water. I think this is part of why the back end keeps sinking. On the amphibious dragster, I noticed that when the wheel was too low in the water, it lost its ability to propel the vehicle forward. This is because the paddles on the back of the wheels actually pushed the rear down and the top of the wheel was running in the opposite direction as the bottom, so they sort of fought each other and just didn't really go anywhere. I had hoped the angled tread tips would prevent a lot of the downward force on the back end of the track, but I had to make the treads tall enough to be able to drive on land. So the front portion of the tread is generating some lift, but the rear portion can still create a downward force as it throws a ton of water upward. This creates a moment that will make it want to wheelie. Well, there's no wheels, so I don't really know what you call it on this thing. If you have a good recommendation, let me know in the comments. And I just realized that it may not be the displacement of water sinking the back end. It could actually be this moment driving the back end down. If we review the onboard clips, we can see that the added floats are being forced underwater at times. So this lends a lot more credit to the possibility that the rear end is being forced underwater and not dropping simply because the water is pushed out from under the floats. Luckily with the track design, we have a long region of tread propelling the boat forward and the top of the tread is never underwater so it can still move forward pretty well. Things quickly devolved into playing in the mud. No. <laughs> You're gonna lose a croc. You better go get that croc before it floats away. Dude, you were gross. Stop, no, stop. <laughs> we gotta get away. Dude, you were so gross. You're not riding in my truck, you're walking home. <laughs> Dude, if you, what are you washing it for? You're gonna keep... Putting it back in that nasty crock. Cleaning up. Hey, why are you so dirty, little kid? <laughs> you better not. <laughs> and finally breaking down boxes with an old golf club. This is typical life with an eight-year-old and it's an absolute blast. But testing isn't over. We need to see how fast this thing is. And to do that, we are going to race our Can-Am. It can top 50 miles an hour, but it's actually not that quick off the line. So I think the boat actually has a chance at beating the off-road vehicle in an off-road race. That's a really weird thing to say. And we were quickly set up back at our dirt drag strip for the moment of truth. Embarrassingly, on the first run, I forgot to put the Can-Am in drive, so Jet just blew right past me with a massive cloud of dust. So we lined up for a few more runs, and the results were really not much different. This boat is just a beast off the line, and I was never going to come close. But the 3D printed treads started to self-destruct, so we figured it was best to clean up the shrapnel and head back to the shop. While these treads are pretty demolished, I am actually very surprised that the 3D printed parts held together this long. You can see they're not solid infill, so this is pretty impressive. At this point, I want to point out that these treads are very deliberately designed to have a close spacing, so they work well on land, but they also alternate between wide and narrow in an attempt to optimize traction in water. They're also tapered in an effort to encourage minimal water disruption, but I don't think we quite achieved that. Tread destruction is actually a big reason I chose not to go with a floating tread design like the DARPA cat. Still not quite sure how you say that one. 
I just feel like a floating tread design is always going to be way too sensitive to tread damage and I don't really believe floating treads can be made robust enough and reliable enough at any sort of reasonable cost. So I think all of the flotation should come from the hole or additional pontoons. I have a ton of improvements I want to make on the next build and hopefully we will be back with that soon. Thanks for watching.